Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Uh, just got a Ford Focus hair pull up. Um, needs a bit of looking at, rough running, especially in the mornings. Okay, we're inside the vehicle here. Started up. It's on 111,000. It's the 1.6 HGI, so quite a good little engine. I'm very familiar with these. So it doesn't seem to be running rough at the minute, but the customer's complaint is it runs rough in the morning until it sort of warms up a little bit. Okay, so I'm using the Launch Eurotab 3 scan tool. I'm gonna go to, uh, let's just go back to a quick diagnose. See what sort of fault codes we've got. Haven't got any fault code information just yet from the customer, apart from he's got a brother-in-law who's a mechanic, um, but it's been a month waiting for uh, a resolution on it and no answer uh, so he'd rather just bring it to me and try and get it sorted out quickly basically he said um, PCM let's have a look in here first sometimes it's always worthwhile doing just a full scan just in case now I put a video up recently of a Peugeot Boxer what I didn't really explain probably was I had a look back at it afterwards and I didn't really explain because what I'd done was as I went to the diagnostic, now it was at previous mechanics and they were checking the PCM which there was no fault there apart from a block DPF so what I'd done was I'd done, I'd done a, f a full system scan so this one, smart detection and I went through all of the systems and I found in the BSI that there was the ambient temperature sensor not working now again, that could cause this issue let's have a look, yeah no it is working so again, that ambient temperature sensor, it can cause different problems. Of course, it helps, you know, the injectors use it to determine if it wants to inject more fuel in when it's cold. So that could cause the issue. So sometimes it is work, worth looking in the BSIs, especially on French cars. Um, but anyway, we're waiting for this to scan up and just we'll have a little quick look just through these other items. They may not be relevant, but it's always worth having a quick look. Okay, so it looks like we've got five there popped up on that. Don't know why it was blue at first. Okay, let's see what we have here. What is that front display module? Parking assist, so I'm not really worried about that. Battery voltage could be an issue. Glow plug sensor circuit, yeah, of course, that'll cause an issue when you're cold running. Um, PO37D, so it doesn't really point out one glow plug, but maybe the just a general code. Offset learning at max limit for the injectors, we've got all of them listed there. Let's just click in there. Need fall codes, retrieve. Uh, let's just do a code search. I don't really recognize that code. Glow plug sensor circuit. Sounds to me like it needs a glow plug module or a glow plug relay. Poor performance, engine misfiring, poor fuel miles per gallon, hard to start in the morning. That's exactly what he's getting. Uh, fusible link, glow plug defective or an ECM issue. So looks like he's going to need a set of glow plugs and maybe the glow plug relay looking at anyway. Okay, back. Back. We have the cylinders. Cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4 offset. Let's have a click on that again. This is a handy little website. It just gives you a quick description of what you need to be looking at. Atomizing fuel, reduced fuel economy, engine misfire, so the same thing again. Fuel smell, engine performing abnormally, smoke. Yeah, he's getting all of those items in the morning, he said. Vacuum leak, plugged air filter, cracked intake tube, head gasket, ECM, worn or cracked pistons, hopefully not. Don't usually see that. Cracked intake, so yeah air leak or blocked up air filter yeah can be very common to get a blocked up air filter cause it or blocked fuel filter possibly 
Okay, let's just exit that. So we've got the same codes, one, two, three, four, basically, for the injectors there. So basically what that's saying through the description of the code there is that the injectors are trying to compensate, basically, for a loss of air. Uh, and it's it's it can only compensate so much, so it's gone beyond its max limit. Is, that's what I believe. Um, we're probably not going to find a lot on data stream for that. So I'm just trying to have a look at sort of the airflow on that. Um, if we go up, problem is, is I don't know exactly if if that's a good reading or not. I'm, I don't really watch airflow grams per second that often, to be honest. Uh, so. I'll be honest, I can't really remember if that's a good reading or not. But it's moving up and down as I accelerate, so it's we'll, um, we'll, we'll have a look under the bonnet. Let's get off this engine cover. Okay, if we get the light on that, it looks like that fuel filter wasn't replaced in a long time. Um, so, I mean, with any sort of issues like this, the first thing you want to do is change your filters. Um, just to make sure, just having a look around here just to see if we've got any sort of wet coolant hoses, sorry, boost hoses. They look dry, but we can always get a get a um, smoke tester on here just to make sure we haven't got any air leaks. I think we'll get the air box open and have a look inside. Now you see, we can sort of tell by looking at the filter there, it hasn't been open in a while, the fuel filter, but we can't physically um, open that up and have a look at it. Well, you probably can, but it's a lot of work. Best thing to check to uh, get an idea of the service history is look at the air filter really, see how recently that's been changed. So that's all that screws out. Quite stiff. Oh, we're still catching a little bit there. Okay. Well, that's not a good sign. We've got some leaves already blown away. Now you see that shape? We've got a little bit of a shape there to the to the filter. You can see there where it's it's plugged up and it is disforming. So I'm gonna say that that's the problem. Really there for a minute. Uh, but what we what I'm probably gonna do here is change that and the fuel filter and we'd have to probably just observe it after that see if the fault codes are still coming back uh, if that then it's going to be a case of maybe the injectors need pulling out and putting on a bench and testing something i can't do here i don't have that on, on board okay i've got the launch uk smoke detector set up here i'm just going to get it connected into the in intake there we'll just check it just to be sure that we haven't got any air leaks from anywhere now in one of my last videos a lot of Got a lot of people asking me what is that glue i used to seal up the intercooler hose now i've sealed intercooler hoses with that glue and customers have come back to me a week later after doing a couple of miles and it still holds so it's pretty good glue i'll try and get the link to it and put it in the video the reason why i'm mentioning that is i recently blew my uh bladder bag here for the smoke machine i busted it so it exploded and um, i've used that glue to glue this up and it is holding. Now it does take a fair bit of pressure. And you can see there we inflate the bag. And the glue does hold it together. Okay, so we've now got smoke, so we're just gonna connect that up into the pipe there that goes to the car. We'll give it a few minutes to see if we've got any smoke exiting any uh, any of the boost hoses or intake manifold or anything like that. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. I think I'm pretty happy that we haven't got any boost leaks. I'm going to put the main cause down to that block filter for now. Um, if the problem comes back, of course we can look elsewhere, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be the cause there. Turn that off. We'll get this released. I'll just show you that again if we inflate it. You see there it inflates the bag. See how strong that glue holds. Pretty good for pretty good for glue really, isn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna go away, get some filters for that, and we'll come back and get them fitted. Okay, we have the new filters here, air filter is Wix, the fuel filter is from Blueprint. That's all we can get hold of. So let's get this one going. Okay, that's all in, new filter there. 
Okay, we've got a couple of little 8 mil bolts here have already loosened out. Looks like we need to get this little bracket off. So we've got two more 8 mil bolts here and here. Uh, we've got a little electrical connector there. Another one over there. Just took those back. Uh, we've got a couple of fuel, fuel line connectors here. Just twist it around, see if we can get, get it pressed in and out. Okay, we've got both of those connect, disconnected. We'll get the filter out. So we're going to hold the filter over a filter over a, a drain pan here just to turn that. Now hopefully we should be able to turn that and release some of the fuel from underneath there. Of course, if we turn it up, it's coming out of the top. Now on the top here we have three T15 Torx 15 bolts. Let's we'll get those loosened out. Now whenever I see a car that's got an original Ford sticker on it, it makes me think, has this car ever been serviced? Now his service book doesn't have any Ford stamps on it, so looks like it hasn't been changed in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just using a primer bulb just to get the fuel up into the filter. So we can see now the filter is full of fuel. So that comes from that set there from Laser. It's a diesel bleeding kit. Okay, I'm back in the car. We're just going to clear the fault codes. And we will see if it's possible to do any sort of relearns on the injectors. Let's have a look. Reset the high pressure fuel system learn values. Reset the fuel injector learn values. So. It'll be done, that side will be done on the next drive cycle. Turn it off. That's complete. Okay, we have to wait 160 seconds. Okay, now that's done, we will do a high pressure fuel system relearn as well. Ignition on here. Engine off. And that's the same story there again. We have to wait. Okay, now that's done, we'll just start the car up. We'll let it run for a few minutes, take it on a short drive. So we've just got it on a drive here for a few miles. You can definitely hear a different sort of tone from the injectors now, and different sort of noise from them. Okay, around about 10 minutes driving now, we'll just come back in, check if any default codes have come back. And they haven't. So you're going to have to now take it on a drive around, wait till tomorrow and see if that has cured the problem. Uh, he doesn't want to go ahead with the glow plugs just now. He wants to he wants to wait and see how the car behaves now, now that the filters have been changed, and we'll go from there. Okay, so that's it. We're all finished on that one, and we'll see you in the next video.